wandering the glum streets, engaging half-heartedly with the dejected husks that were once locals, admiring the last scraps of passion that plaster the walls in the form of protest, and having your every move scrutinized by corrupt police. You find yourself having one solitary thought. Holy shit, I wish I had a power washer! Roadkill Agora is the newest and first game release from artist, game dev, and friend of mine Claymore Gwen, which has you wandering the streets of an unnamed town over the course of several days. Over these days you will meet the town's residents, discover their plights, and explore locales such as... Other people's homes. An active crime scene. Ladder. What? A crack house? Well, technically an acid house, but the vibes are there. Um... Foxy's house from Fazzy Fred Knight at Five Bears. Computer. And if my list of locations did not make this clear enough, this game has some grit to it. Every place has an aura of decay and filth. The entire town reeks of a people bled by industry and neglected by government. This is what the game is all about. If you're looking for a gameplay-heavy experience, I have to say, this is probably not for you. Because gameplay-wise, this is fairly straightforward especially if you're familiar with the first two pagan games by Oleander Garden. It's mostly an exploration game with some level of challenge in hunting down items and figuring out their uses in the world, so not a whole lot to write home about in these regards. But that's not where the strength of this game lies, or where the strength of this game is supposed to lie. Where that strength is, is in the atmosphere. Because holy shit is this game bleak! You're locked in a concrete nightmare, and not the fun kind of nightmare where you see scary shit. The bleak kind of nightmare where you live through an entire day of mindless paperwork and monochromatic decor, only to wake up and realize you're late for your son's christening. The most energetic part of this town is the looming factory that sputters out smoke into the sky and lets loose mechanical groans while dominating the streets around it. And these mechanical groans are one of the only sounds in the game, and honestly, I feel like that works in its favor. I'm all about spooky or atmospheric sound design, and sometimes the best sound design is no sound at all. Silence or quiet ambience is often enough to evoke feeling in itself, especially when it can be interrupted by something as unpleasant as an electrical buzz or distant creaking. A lack of sound where you would expect it can also be disquieting. For example, you walk into Fozzy Nightbear's Polizzeria, and you expect to hear... something. Anything. But no. Nearly everywhere is silent or near enough. The only real signs of life in this town outside of the occasional off-putting noise are in the occasional dumpster fire or in the scattered and elegiac NPCs. Some of these NPCs are pretty sweet and they give you advice or offer some kind of half-comfort, but others are pretty fucking grim. This guy's really going through it, this person doesn't really want to speak to you, and this cop is a bastard man. And on the topic of cops being bastard men, let's talk about this game's best feature. Graffiti. The graffiti is bloody wonderful. Let's jam through some of my favorites, as well as some of my favorite bits of terrible advertising. Study your dreams. Helltown! Helltown! Die. Whirl! Friend. No escape. <laughs> Bubsy. Dead trains exhibit. You're here forever. Smoking. Eviscerate yourself. Cyber fuck! I'm guessing there's some kind of politics at play here? Tim. Eric. Demons are among us. Pray. Welcome to the Library of Ouroboros. Resist post-death mimetic influences. Do not drown. Do not sink. It is not an escape. Missing. Loopy. This one made me very sad. Fuck this. Okay. 80s. Now this raises a wonderful point. The 80s. People romanticize the 80s so much to the point of it being cultural erasure. The 80s were not colorful, happy times of synthwave and vibes. It was grey and bleak and Thatcherite. Mines were closing and people were out of work. This is why I'm absolutely in love with the concept of analog horror and the VHS aesthetic being used as a horror medium. The 80s were fucking horrible. Roadkill Agora gets this right. It shows public dissent, antagonistic governmental forces, implied poverty, grimy industry, and strange new technologies. Thanks, Gwen. Again, this is assuming that the game actually takes place in the 80s, which it most likely does not, given the technology at play, like a... like a smartphone. But goddamn, I'm passionate about it, and this kind of gave me an excuse to rant about it, so, you know. Thanks, Gwen. Anyway, there's not much else I can say about the game without effectively showing you everything. It's pretty short, as in it's designed to be played through in one sitting. 
I would fully recommend you to play through it yourself if you're a fan of the Pagan or Hexcraft games, as it has a similar vibe but takes a much more overtly political stance and has less horror, if you want to call it that. I also recognize that this kind of game's not for everyone, and you know what? That's chill. Yeah, that's uh, that's it. Bit of a short one today, but I really just wanted to talk about Roadkill Agora. Follow and support Claymore Gwen on stuff or I will attack you. The game is free and a link to it is in the description. Explore it and tell me what you find. Anyway, join me next time for a look at a game which I believe some of you will already know quite well. Bye bye